All right, the package arrived just a day late. That's not too bad. Obviously, this here on top is not an anime DVD. It would be uh, the next uh, DVD collection movie. Screw it, I've seen it before. It's quite funny. It's a toaster. But yeah, everything came in this one box. It's a fairly tightly packed box. <clears throat> We've got a couple things that were delayed arrived and then a couple of other things let's see and I'll just take them out and add them on top of that like so and here would be my receipt down here so why don't we <coughs> start going through the pile obviously if I'm going to do this then I'm gonna have to get the blu-ray version out as well but we got the Kokoro connect OVAs, which should uh, end the series. DVD and Blu-ray versions. Nice that they both came out and they're both here. <clears throat> so, DVD version. version. Basically the same disc art. Just a DVD version and a Blu-ray version. Let's see. Next up we've got the DVD and Blu-ray versions of Batum. This is complete collection. I have no idea what this is about. But it's a very strange name either way any way you look at it because it's one more O than I would have so it seems like it's got a sound effect for a name <clears throat> I hate it when the plastic sticks like this really does make it a lot harder and this is a Sentai and I guess I do need to check the Sentais because I've noticed that some of these are both A and B as well in fact uh, Kokoro Connect is regions A and B on its Blu-ray as well <coughs> so in the DVD version we have three discs and here in the Blu-ray version we've got two with the same artwork as the first two discs, or the first and the last disc. Yeah, first and the last. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. Let's choose an order to these next few things. Let's do this next. We've got the next Bleach set. 19. Nothing particularly impressive about the contents as usual, but I think that's an okay thing. You know, I'd rather have that and get the anime than not get the anime. Next up, we've got two fairy tale releases. We've got set seven, which would be the third set of season two, and we've got uh, the Phoenix Priestess movie, both DVD Blu ray combo packs. So for this I don't remember what the insides of these sets look look like but here we've got DVD versions and then the blu-ray versions regions a and B according to the back and then for the Phoenix priestess movie this says a and B on the back Basically, I've known to start 
looking a bit more because a couple of last week's releases, such as uh, Girls in Panzer, I believe uh, I looked in the back. They had A and B. Let me grab those since they're just right here. Yeah, Girls in Panzer says A and B down there. And I think this one did too. Arcana Famiglia. So it seems like there's more and more coming out that are like that. <clears throat> okay, next up, we've got Gotcha Man. Ah, yes, this is a 14 disc Blu ray set which has all 105 episodes in the OVAs. This would get me the entire series on Blu-ray, and that's a nifty little side DVD case art thing there. This is pretty heavy, so these are probably thick with discs. So we've got this, which has six discs in it, apparently. One, two, three, four, five. Number six is upside down. <coughs> this one has six more. Some of this artwork looks familiar because it was also used for the DVD releases. And then uh, this one has a disc 13 and disc 14. Disc 13 has the OVAs and disc 14 is extras. The extras disc here is a Blu ray. So that's the series on Blu ray. And since I already had the series on DVD, I got the um, DVD version of the OVA collection to complete that. So they both complement each other. And I do believe things were intentionally released that way, where you could get the OVA separately if you were somebody that had uh, purchased the. TV series before. Good guy, uh, Sentai, I think. Yeah, I think about it. I didn't check. This is Region A only. And this is what the OVA disc looks like. Nothing complicated. Just the three OVA episodes. That's good to know. And now that this pile is getting tall, let's divide that for the final two things which you all saw on the table, which was Nakaimo, my little sister, is among them. Since these are already open, we can just take a look. And then we've got the Blu-ray version, which has the first and last disc images replicated on them. Alright, now that's all the DVDs I received, but I did receive a couple of other things worth mentioning. For example, I think I mentioned yesterday that I went to the Poila Magic Madoka Magica third movie on Sunday. And so, of course, since I showed up really early, not in order to get something, but just because I'm the kind of person that shows up really early if I've never been there before, I, of course, got one of the 50 ones they were handing out, and I just got the Homer one. Interesting. There's a part of me that doesn't quite know what to do with it. I don't want to throw this packaging away. It's kind of nice packaging too, so eventually I'm going to figure out how to display this in a way where this sleeve it was in is preserved. But for now, it's going to sit in there. <clears throat> and I guess I also got this while I was there. Somebody was saying I should maybe give it a shot. Maybe I will, but... I don't know, I'm not a big fan. And then this other thing is related to the Bubblegum Crisis um, 
Kickstarter because I got one of the um, physical items ones, and so I got a Largo 3. It's called, a, according to the packaging here, it's Largo, Largo 3-4, which I think is the fourth Largo 3 cell. And uh, this is just pretty cool. The only problem is I have not figured out how I'm going to go about um, preserving this because it's actually a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. I I thought that maybe one of my bigger comic book sleeves would probably fit it, but no, it's too big for that. So this one as well is staying inside this box until I uh, come up with a good solution for displaying it. So. <clears throat> There we go, that's um, this week's Anime DVD Collection update. Sorry, it was a day late, but it couldn't be helped. Things were frozen up in Dallas due to the winter weather. And that's the real problem with Texas winters is that you know, they're probably relatively warm up until it hits really hard. And then it, we tend to get a bit of water all over everything, and so we just end up with everything covered in ice. And since it only happens like every a couple of days, once every two or three years, there's no rush. Dallas might be slightly different. I know they've got snow in situations where we haven't gotten any, etc. But huh, let's see. There's actually quite a few things I've watched. I think last week I talked about starting Little Busters. So obviously I finished that release. And um, I think last week I mentioned how it had kind of gone through its clumsy start phase, which some key or visual arts um, animes are like. I think Clan Ed kind of was a little bit of an example. And Little Busters maybe felt a little bit more than Clan Ed. And maybe that's why I like canon, because right, I think I described that canon was very solid to me. But all that aside, after that, once it got closer to the end, that release, that's when it started going into some of its um, more key animation related stuff. I.e. The, the, those kinds of... It, it, was, it was getting really good. Unfortunately, since I'm saying was, that means that it stopped in the middle of it. So I probably should have gone with my original instinct. Uh, weeks ago to hold off on watching it until I had all of it. But I guess it's too late now. I'm waiting for the second half just to um, not only finish that little story arc, but to see where the rest of the story or series goes. Oh well. <clears throat> After that on my list, I apparently watched Girls in Panzer. And what can I say about that? It's actually pretty good. I was a bit worried about what I might experience going into it, but the truth of the matter is, I think it's a pretty solid anime. Maybe not the sort of thing that would be everybody's favorite, but it, it plays off like a fairly stereotypical sports anime, except it's just about girls doing competitive tank battles against other schools. It's sort of like, um, you know, just basically any sports anime. Our main team are the underdogs and uh, <clears throat> kind of new to the competition sort of thing. And I'm not sure what more to say about it. I, I guess one thing I'm worried about is, or I, one thing I went into worried about it is every time I hear the name, I keep thinking Pansu instead of pan, pan, Panzu. Panzer, sorry. I don't know German, so... Basically, um... Panzer, I do believe, would... I do believe is Tank or something along those lines, but... Panzer would, of course, be... What comes to mind. I think even in the anime, at least in the English dub, they kind of made a joking reference to this. Where you kind of wonder if it's a fan service anime. And the truth is, it's actually... I can't remember any fan service in it. But I can remember thinking maybe I had seen something briefly. So, like, if there is fan service, it's very, very light. So it's not a very etchy anime. It means it focuses a bit more on what it's doing. So, if you ever thought you wanted to watch something like K-On! Where they were playing their instruments more and maybe exploring the ideas more, maybe 
you know, girls in Panzer would be something you'd find interesting, because it really does take its concepts quite a bit more seriously than a lot of Moy Blobs do, and I think this is a very Moy Blob anime. Just... I don't know. Ah, oh, yes. See, I've got a little list up over there open to help me remember, because there's a lot of little things. I watched a One Piece Season 5 Voyage 4, and it was a very satisfying place where it went. It's, I think there's one more volume in the fifth season, and I know exactly why they would need that, but it, feel, it feels like they've resolved a lot of things that I, that I wanted to find resolved for the past couple of seasons, so that's nice. Now, compared to some of the more serious story-building seasons, I wouldn't say it's necessarily... <clears throat> it's not at those levels. It's just... It's nice what happened. It's maybe more reminiscent of what happened in Season 1, I guess, where it's just like... What got resolved is how the crew has been updated and how they're going to you know just basically their friendship more solidified due to the events in seasons four and five and you know that's actually one of one piece's high points it's just not its highest point and that's kind of what makes one piece a fun anime is because you got these high points like that which are higher than the high points where they go someplace and you know, they're better than everybody there, but it's all about how they can pass on their greatness to these other people. Sort of like, oh, you people can't cook so well, here's some ideas on how you can cook better. Or, you need somebody to do work, yeah, we just happen to help, you know. It, One Piece is just a mix of fun building sort of stuff. Some of it is building a happier world, some of it is building... An, a, a more mysterious audience understanding of the world. And I think that's what seasons two and three had that were really strong. It's just really compelling villains in different ways. But also making you feel like the world is just a really big place full of mysteries that our characters are more on the heels of than they would have thought. Seasons 4 and 5 didn't build on it as much, just more exploring interesting places and ex showing interesting ideas and entertaining. I do look forward to seeing more One Piece. It's definitely not at a place where it's like, I'm tired of this. I kind of wish we had more. Oh, well. Um, so, Nakaima was sitting there on the table there, waiting for the update, and so I went ahead and watched that. And... I don't know. Something about it is a bit off. But it didn't really piss me off like some other recent anime have. And it didn't feel like it went terribly overboard. It just kind of felt like maybe it's an okay anime. There's a couple things off about it. I think one really good example is at the very beginning our main character is trying to navigate somewhere but he's using the GPS on his phone and I don't know. I don't know that that's necessarily wrong, but it's like... There's something about that that seems a bit strange, where you'd think that with that sort of technology, you'd have a easier time doing it. Although, at the same time, since I don't use that sort of thing, maybe I just don't understand just how bad it works. But, you know, he was walking on foot, so it seemed like it'd kind of be harder for him to get lost or something. And so it played off an old stereotype using modern technology sort of stuff. And I'm, you know, that's just a feeling of offness about it, like I said. The basic premise was actually exactly what I guessed it to be. I.e., oh, here's a guy and um, <clears throat> he's got uh, to choose, you know, he, he, here's his harem that's developing. And he has to be careful because one of them may be his sister that he's never known. And I guess the way it's set up, it's different. 
I'm not sure if he's a particularly spectacular in main character, but they did approach him from a notably different way that actually maybe sets him up in a somewhat more realistic fashion, i.e. it doesn't leave you asking questions about where's his parents, how's he being funded, or any anything like that. You kind of have a good idea of everything that's going on there. And it's got its amusingness, and while it was pretty fan service compared to something like Minami K no, Maken Ki, sorry. They both are formatted kind of similar with the long M word and the short K word, and Minami K is something completely different that I am intrigued and in, uh, interested in seeing, but it's not out on DVD yet, I think. But, no. Makenki had just had excuses for constantly seeing underpants and constantly seeing people's tits poking through their um, clothing or anything like that. So this one wasn't quite like that. I thought from that perspective, it's a bit easier. It doesn't feel like it's forcing itself as hard, I guess. Although it's still, I think, kind of common. I don't know. Again, mostly an okay anime. Didn't wow me, but did piss me off. <clears throat> Let's see, next on the list is the third Poila Magic Madoka Magica movie. And I'm not sure if I can really say all that much about it. It's one thing where I've realized if I try and talk about anything that actually happens in it, I'm going to spoil too much. But all I can say is that I was very impressed by it. I mean, it's taken me a while to digest and come to terms with what happened in it. Some people... Some people seem to be having a disconnect with what happens in the movie and what they think could happen as opposed to should have happened. And what I mean is, maybe they think that characters are doing things that are out of character. And I never really thought that. It kind of made sense, and it was mostly a matter of understanding kind of where the movie stands from an emotional impact perspective with respect to the series. And that's... It, the fact that it makes it really hard is a pretty good thing. Uh, hard for you to kind of evaluate that stuff. It basically means it'll probably keep you thinking. I, I would really like to be watching it again and what maybe watching the series again and then trying to say, oh yeah, this kind of all makes sense. But, yeah, I have to stop there. Because anything else, then I might spoil it. In fact, I'm hoping I didn't spoil anything too bad just by saying what I did do. In other words, I enjoyed it. I can't wait for it to come out in DVD on, or Blu-ray so that I can, um, watch it some more show it to my friends and family who can only hear about how if I tried to describe it to them if I tried to tell them what happened it would probably um, surprise them quite a bit so let's finish up with the last thing I watched and see I watched a good amount of stuff this past week and last night I, I was just finishing up the first set of Excel World and so obviously it's Excel World that the first 12 episodes of that that I watched. And... I can see how people could enjoy it. For me... Well, I guess the first problem was when I picked up the case and opened it and I saw the character design for the main character, I kind of didn't want to watch it. Not because I had a problem with the character design, but because it's usually this sort of character design intentionally done in order to make somebody seem like a loser. I, they take a normally shaped anime character and turn them into a temporarily deformed character. But, interestingly enough, I, I decided to give it a shot because I didn't think that was actually the case. I thought that was the actual character design. It turned out that is. So he's kind of intentionally designed in a very unusual fashion and I can kind of respect that because unlike strange backstories and whatnot this one is a very different way to approach the main character but my problem beyond that is it 
could have probably pulled off the character a little bit better. It's like, on the one hand, he's supposedly supposed to have a fairly sharp mind, I guess. Maybe not necessarily for everyday life sort of stuff, but at least for gaming sort of stuff. And they haven't really been playing his um, role in the anime as if that was actually the case. Instead, he's kind of been your usual shonen noob to a um, overall concept sort of thing. And so that's kind of sad. It's sort of like how in Special A, the primary female character is played off as just this person who does all these... Um, she gets hundreds on all her tests, and the only reason the guy she likes always does better is because he gets 101s and 102s, i.e. extra credit for helping the instructor find uh, mistakes in the test that she missed. And I think I've pointed out in talking about that before that it seems rather out of character for somebody who can do that to then be as clumsy a ditz as she is otherwise, simply because a lot of those things, such as math, kind of requires a fine attention to detail. I mean... I know, like, for my Physics 2 lab, the thing they told me at the very, in the very first class was that a lot of the points people tended to lose on those was doing a bad job of keeping track of their significant digits and which figures they were using, because they would get marked off just little bits for that, but they, since they're all over the place, they get marked down a whole lot, so they tried to drill us in at the very beginning, do that, and that's why I did good in that Physics lab, and that's the same th sort of thing with math, you know, if you copy it wrong, if you accidentally do a minus instead of a plus sometime, you're going to get the wrong answer when you get down to the bottom. And a good math um, grader would probably identify that you did that and say, hey, you did that here. You need to go through the steps to make sure your math actually checked out in the end so that you know that you made that sort of mistake. And then you need to learn how to recognize that you made those mistakes and stuff like that. And it's those little things, those little attention to details that you can miss that can cause you to go from perfect score down to low 90, down into the 80s. I don't know about the 70s. The truth of the matter is I did well enough in college that I didn't, I don't think I, oh no, if you I probably got a C on one test. But, uh. That was because I forgot how to do those kinds of problems. Anyways, same thing with um, Excel World with the main character where it's like he does some neat things on rare occasions, but I feel like they're underutilizing the main character. And because of that, I can't help but it, it, it kind of makes me feel like the anime really is more of a catering anime than, say, Sword Art Online, which I've heard was done by the same person, maybe takes place in the same universe. It's It doesn't have that big of a impact, or it isn't that big of a deal between the two, I guess. But it, they explore kind of similar things about the social outcast and his importance in um, kind of New World Order, I guess. It's a very, very, very rough way of describing either series, and it's not quite exact. But with Sword Art Online, you kind of understood that, uh, our based on our main character's history, what he did, you know, you could kind of respect him as um, a rather clever individual in his own right, and you could act actively recognize what he was doing, whereas Excel World is kind of relying more on him just occasionally doing something that blows people's minds, That, but otherwise being somebody that he doesn't? I don't know. And the truth of the matter is, it's just strange. <sighs> but not bad. And I could watch more of it. But it's definitely not going to replace anything on my favorites list. Or it's not going to work its way up there with anything it's been doing thus far, I guess. Well, that's um, everything I've watched this past week, I think. <sighs> so next week, I don't know how, that will, how it will turn out since today's Wednesday, obviously. So that means I'm losing a little bit of time for watching stuff. But I guess we'll find out.
So y'all have a nice week.